Welcome to the weekly rundown. We'll be discussing wide receiver tight end on defense in this one. And let's get straight to the picks and not waste any time. Uh, for wide receivers this week, I really want a part of the Arizona passing game London. And Larry Fitzgerald just certainly sticks out to me. I think you can make a case for John Brown and maybe even Michael Floyd, especially in tournaments, because I think they're going to absolutely light him up. But when we're talking about cash games, there is no one safer than Fitzgerald. I looked at his game log, 14.7 fantasy points is been the minimum he's done this season. So we're certainly looking at the reemergence of Larry Fitzgerald. Carson Palmer's just really making it look easy. Baltimore's allowing the second most fantasy points to wide receivers, third most receptions, and they've allowed 97.1 yards a game to the opposing team's top target. So Larry Fitzgerald, I'm looking at 100 yards. I'm probably looking at a touchdown. He's only 14, mid 14,000s. You don't have to pay up for the Julio Joneses of the world to get what I think is going to be similar production. So I think he makes a lot of sense. Who do you like at wide receiver? You know, I got a, I got a bargain for you. And this guy is Martavis Bryant. And, you know, the reason that he's a, a bargain is because this will only be his second game, you know, since um, missing the first five ball games of the season. You look at what he did this past ball game against the uh, Arizona Cardinals, which is a top flight pass defense. And you talk about 137 yards, two touchdowns, 35.5 fantasy points. He's only going to cost you $9,900 on, on FantasyDraft.com. So I like Martavis Bryant. I mean, you think about – you talk about production, over 100 yards, and get him, and to be able to get him at this price, it's a no-brainer for me. Yeah, I mean, using guys at a value is the name of the game. As long as their price is down, you might as well take, take advantage of the fantasy points you're going to get. And the thing I like is Landry Jones doesn't really have a mid-tier level to his game. He can either fire it downfield or, <laughs> or he throws a short game. He doesn't really – he isn't really comfortable with, you know, the 10, 15-yard passes, which is why Bryant makes a lot of sense. And then obviously if Big Ben's back, you still like him. I mean, that's not a downgrade whatsoever. So I agree with you, Martavis Bryant, worth a look. Uh, oh, yeah. Let's go – Let's go to the tight end position. This one for me is, I mean, I know there was a no-brainer of the week for Gurley, but if there's a no-brainer at tight end, it's Antonio Gates. I mean, let's not forget how terrible Oakland had been against the tight ends before they completely shut out Owen Daniels. I mean, we've looked at Peyton Manning. He's just been awful, honestly. He's been very, very bad. I think he's bottom two, and I think it was completion percentage. He's just, he, he's the wide receivers are getting it done in terms of receptions, but they're having a tough time scoring touchdowns. And this Oakland defense still was allowing basically a hundred and a touchdown or two to every tight end who came before them, including Crockett Gilmore, including Eifert. I mean, they're just anyone. Uh, so I'm going back to the well when it comes to, to Antonio Gates, who had 90 yards again last week. Phillip Rivers had 500 yards passing. So I yeah. think, you know, he's going to figure out a way to get it done against the division rival. And, and Antonio Gates, you know, for 11,000 as opposed to Gronkowski's 14,000, I think makes all the sense in the world to to save some money and go with him and probably get some similar production. You know, I never want to say anyone's going to be as good as Gronkowski because he's just so ridiculous, but this is the best matchup you could ever ask for with Gates. So, so I'm going with him. Who do you like? You know, I like uh, another division game rival rivalry game, you know, the Dallas Cowboys visiting the New York giants, tight end Jason Witten, you know, his last two ball games against the giants in New York, he's had three touchdowns. So when you think about that, the matchup, um, you know, the quarterback situation where Matt Castle is going to get to start. You know, Castle, he loves to throw the check downs. He loves to uh, work the middle of the field. Not a great deep ball thrower. I know they want to open up that offense in, in Dallas and try to get the, get some more bigger plays down the field. But Jason Witten is always a good good target, especially against the New York Giants. Yeah, I like all the, like, short options for the, for the Cowboys because I don't think Castle's, you know, going to go deep very often. You know, Terrence Williams kind of fallen out of the picture. It's been the McFaddens, the Wittens, the guys who are going to catch the five-yard pass right. and get them out of trouble that are worth it. And again, McFadden's kind of a name that I'm looking at this week. I think he's 6,500. He's, he's near the minimum, and when it comes to PPR, you love those guys. They're just going to catch five passes for and cost you almost nothing. Uh, let's right. move on to the defense. This one, I'm punting again. Uh, I kind of don't like spending up at defense if I can avoid it, even though, you know, Denver last week, an interception for a touchdown kind of hurt. Uh, they were kind of the chalk. But the Rams defense this week, I mean, I'm kind of going against the Josh McCown 
recent trend. He kind of had a tough time last week against those Broncos, but he did throw for 300 yards and three straight before that. But I'm tending, I tend to believe with his weapons, he's closer to the quarterback we saw last week as opposed to the, the three straight 300 yards. And he did throw two interceptions. So I, I like that. You know, the Rams defense under Jeff Fisher is pretty tough. I think this is just simply too cheap for them. And I'd rather fit in the offensive talent. Uh, who do you like at the, at the defense position? You know, defensively, I like the Atlanta Falcons in a uh, bounce back game against the uh, Tennessee Titans. You know, um, again, they've had some extra rest. You know, Atlanta does, doesn't, um, well, Tennessee doesn't pose the same type of threats in the passing game like, a, um, like the New Orleans Saints. They don't have Drew Brees at the quarterback position. I know Mariota, he's banged up at the quarterback position, so we don't even know if he'll be able to go. So, you know, looking for a defense and a good matchup for me is the Atlanta Falcons versus the Tennessee Titans. Yeah, and what was Tennessee doing last week after Mariota got hit low? I don't understand why he stayed in the game. If you watched him, it was just hard to watch. He was turning the ball over basically because he couldn't walk. I mean, he had a sprained MCL, and they left him in the game. I don't think he's going to play this week, which certainly – actually, I don't even know if it helps. You'd probably rather have an injured Mariota the way he was in, but Mettenberger, you know, not a quarterback you're afraid to go against in terms of defense. Uh, Let's move on to my favorite segment every week, the questions. Again, people stepped up this week. Uh, Last week, I had to fill in for the third question, but people brought it this week. So I want to get your opinion on uh, on some of these. This is a great question, and I want to get your thought on this. Last week, you know, Monday Night Football, the Giants got behind, and Eli Manning only threw for 187 yards. So John Path on Facebook asks, how does Eli Manning only throw for 187 yards and Shane Vereen only catch one pass when their team is down for three quarters? Is that poor play calling? Is that lack of execution? Or, or how does that happen? Because you'd think, you know, Vereen would be the guy when you get down. How do they just totally ignore him and Eli have such a poor game? Man, that's a great question because I, I play Vereen and – and my lineup, and, uh, <laughs> and I was looking for big production and didn't get anything from him. You know, first of all, I think you, gotta, you have to start with the, uh, the protection, uh, the offensive line protection, or lack thereof, for the Giants against the uh, Philadelphia Eagles in that ball game. You know, Eli was under duress the whole game, never really got comfortable. And once you get down in the ball game, you're looking for some bigger plays. You know, maybe the check down was not your first option. So, or you're holding Vereen in a little bit more to try to help with the pass protection, chip a, chip a defensive end, slow down that pass rush. Those are the reasons why I look at him not being, you know, a, a bigger target in that ball game. Yeah, it certainly doesn't promote confidence in him moving forward, though. When the game script kind of plays to your advantage, you think they're down, you think he's going to get some passes, and he gets nothing. Sometimes, you know, Tom Coughlin, there's no rhyme or reason. Probably means this week he'll have 102 touchdowns, and none of us us will use them the way it goes. But uh, moving on to the next question, this one comes from Andrew Holtz on Facebook. Which QB do you prefer out of these this week? He gives you Matthew Stafford, Bridgewater, Carr, Alex Smith, Foles, McCown, or Hoyer? So kind of a whole list. Out of that list, who do you like? Oh, man. Well, I, I guess I would have to go with Stafford, you know, based off the, uh, the game he just had. Um, you know, I, I can't recall. Who, who are they facing this week? Uh, they, are, they are playing Minnesota, so it's uh, – that's, that's a tough matchup. You know, is the game in Detroit or, or uh, in Minnesota? That is a good question. The game is in Detroit. In Detroit, okay. In Detroit, you know what? Yeah, give me, give me, give me Stafford. Give me Stafford. I'm, I'm gonna say he started. He he got it going. And he's gonna continue to keep it going. Yeah, and I I think. I like Stafford of that list too, but I think Bridgewater is interesting. You know, Cutler just had a nice game against them when they were playing from behind a little bit. The problem is Bridgewater has yet to have a top 12 quarterback week, which is kind of pathetic. And, you know, his options aren't great, but I do like Bridgewater against that Lions defense, which is just a mess right now. And they were really lucky to win last week. All right. Our last question, I kind of adjusted it because I think I know the answer to the real question. He asks, would you fight Ricky Sanders in an octagon and film it? This comes from David Felbaum on Facebook, but I think that question makes a little more sense to ask me because obviously you would, there's no downside to you because I have absolutely no chance, but here, here's my follow-up question. Uh, 
do you think you'd be able to compete at a professional level, MMA, boxing, or anything like that with your football experience? Do you think, you know, with some training, you could give it a shot and, and compete with some of the, the world's best fighters? Being a uh, professional football player, I'm going to, I'm not going to disrespect someone <laughs> else who's a professional at what they do. You know, you see all these, uh, these um, guys who play in the playground and all these things and think they can go out and play professional football. And it's a different, different animal. And I feel the same way about going into, into their sport of choice, uh, whether it be boxing, MMA. I'm not, I'm not professionally trained in that. You know, my fights, I like to end them quick. And if it went past the first round, I'm not sure, <laughs> I'm not sure I had a stamina to, for it to go, uh, for me to be able to win. <laughs> Let me ask you one final question then. We had the professional rugby player who came in and now kick returns for the 49ers. Do you think you could give it a shot in rugby with the similarities, or is that even a different skill set? No, no, no. I feel like I'd, I'd be able to play rugby. You know, that's, <laughs> that's kind of something along the lines, more along the lines of what, I, what I'm used to doing. So rugby, I can do that. Just <laughs> once I uh, – I would just have to find out the rules. They would have to explain those to me. There you go. Teach him the rules, and he's a professional rugby player just like that. London getting it done, as always. Until next time, I'm Ricky Sanders, and we're out.